Okay. Yeah, so I think I that. that. Um, like a little white Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> she is, for the Gen Zs. God. Let's look at Bobby platform versus Kiki Palmer's platform. As much as Drake had time, okay, in his schedule to let this amateur, I'm gonna say it, amateur. We got here in five minutes, it took me 20 years. I, I hey, it has Ooh. been. Hey everybody, welcome back to Human No Resource. Okay, Kiki Palmer had a conversation with Bobby Altop. Kiki Palmer is the lady to love. I can't exactly. find anybody who dislike her, especially not around here. No, we definitely don't dislike we don't... her. I like her a lot, actually. Now, in this interview, she asked it, Bobby Altop a question. I was like, about time. Somebody has to get this clear. Yeah, <laughs> so for people who don't know Bobby, she rose her fame on TikTok with her whole mommy content, you know, saying that, you know, oh, one of my boobs is bigger than the other, or I'm breastfeeding, or what should I wear today yeah. that, you know, that fits my whole mommy aesthetic. Persona. Yeah, so she's a young mom. She has two kids, and she's only 26. Right? Born in 1997, so at the cusp of Gen of millennials and Gen Z. Yeah. Yeah. So, so would, you consider her, would you consider her a millennial or a Gen Z? I'm going to keep it real. The, the cutoff for millennials should have been at 1995. Five? Four. <laughs> We're gonna go okay. there. Yeah, so okay. what happened? So in April 2023, she went from doing mommy content, right? Mm -hmm. It was awkward, quirky, <laughs> monotone kind of ways. And now she's doing podcasting. Yes. And not not only podcasting where she's like only average interviewing people, yeah. Average people or people we don't even know. Yeah. Or even D Lester. She jumped up and done some podcast with uh, Jessica Alba, Drake. Drake. Yeah. How did you get there? <laughs> Think a lot. question we need to ask. So let's talk about Kiki Palmer now. She finally had her on her podcast mm -hmm. where she asked the hard questions that we all want to know. But first, let's understand this, okay? Because mm -hmm. there's so many theories thrown out there about the nature and what she got there. And, yeah. and, and if you look at like the Rolling Stone magazine, in an article called Bobby Altoff pissed off the internet she and did. now she's back for more. It states, as a parody account on TikTok, Bobby Altoff knew her dream of making the transition to a celebrity interviewer was missing one key component, celebrities. So she put out a request to her followers. She would give $300 to whoever could connect her to famous persons willing to be on her comedy podcast. Well, lucky follower got her comedian Rick. Yeah, Rick Glassman, yeah. Yeah, and he's a comedian. I've never heard of him. I have seen him. He's like, I think with the whole Joe Rogan verse. Yeah. And then after that, she got, I know this guy, I, f super funny, Marco. Yeah. Funny Marco. Funny Marco. And we all and know she, him from Walmart. And <laughs> <laughs> My favorite clip, yeah. guys. He meets this old guy. Yeah. And then he tells him about the whole, the church ain't the same anymore. And he goes, it's not. It's not. <laughs> and they go in it. I love it. Anyways. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. She got him on her podcast. And that's the first time I saw her. Yeah. Honestly. The first yeah. time I saw her. And I was like, oh, who's she? All right. Because I know there's a lot of podcasts. This is not a podcast, by the way, guys. Okay. Let's get that clear. Let's get that We're out of the way. We're commentary. We're commentary. And a little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> but yeah, but my point is when I saw him, I was like, follow okay, our TikTok on it and our Instagrams. But the point is when I saw that, I was like, who is she? Yeah. And then after I was like, okay, okay, funny Marco. Okay. She got him there. All right. Mm -hmm. um, maybe she's hip. Maybe she's cool. Maybe she's in with the culture. I honestly thought maybe she's in with the culture. Sure. And then after when she got Drake there, I was like, no. Like, it doesn't seem natural. Something is unique. Mm -hmm. And thank God, Kiki Palmer and other people kind of picked on what could possibly be the issue. Not only that, the interview that she did with Drake got, like, it, it vanished. <laughs> Literally, it vanished. You can't find it on YouTube or anywhere else. Somehow, they had a disagreement or something like that, and they removed that interview. Can we so. get rid of this, like, conspiracy thing, okay? Mm. He knew what he was doing when he put that song on. Yeah. Right? Yeah, more than 30 seconds. Then the you have to is, license it or something like that. Or you have to pay him or something like that. I'm not sure. Other than that, she didn't need it. It kind of propelled her. Catapult her. That's the word I wanted to say. To to fandom and, you know, fame yeah. and all that. Yeah. So Obviously, she's back with the season two, right? All right. But I for her. think, I think um, why people are having some difficulties understanding her, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And why sometimes people have issues reading if the interview went well or not is because of her personality. What is that? I don't know. What is that? Like monotone, want... cringe fest, like, like every moment I'm like, ah, uh. what did yeah. a Rolling Stone called it? They called it a shtick 
And in that shtick, it's a deadpan, absurdist antagonism part of Zach Galifianski. Oh, oh sorry. Galifian Naxi. I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> in between two ferns, part cringe Gen Z oh. interrogation. Okay, yeah, that guy who was on, uh, who did the movie Hangover. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Was it the guy that had the interview with the girl in the stack of cards? Mm -hmm. No, he... And it was so awkward. No, no, no. He was literally uh, with Brad Pitt, and I think Brad Pitt spit a gum at him. Real life or this part is, of the movie? It, no, it's not in the movie, Salma. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that is his podcast or his thing where he interviews celebrities, and he's kind of rude with them. Oh. And I remember one time, Brad Pitt, he was chewing some gum, and he spit it on him. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what they're. That's he had she's Jennifer being Lawrence marketed that way. But uh, let's go back to Kiki Palmer. No, people okay? are gonna come after us the way you butcher that guy's name. But okay, go ahead. But let's talk about Kiki Palmer, okay? Because that's the reason why I am. I got into this, okay? Yeah. Is Kiki Palmer asked her a question? I was like, let's talk about that. How do celebrities who worked really, really hard to get there feel about it? It's always the industry plant gag. I know You're the industry plant, right? I am, but <laughs> so wait, what is the um, industry plant to you? I don't know. I mean, like, the industry is, like, healthy. <laughs> Do you like, what I think is an industry plan is... What Say I think it. industry plan is it's like somebody that tied to someone else in the industry okay. and uses those connections mm -hmm. okay. to capitalize and they like have zero talent. Ooh. That makes more she sense. Said than what I thought she it said was. it. So yeah, I don't have any ties though, so I would love to have had ties. I feel like my Travis life would have been a lot easier. If well, I you don't had need ties. ties. Well, you, you do feel it. kind of planty. We do have the same manager, so it's just I know. Isn't that crazy? It feels a bit planty. This is definitely planty. You, like you got here in five minutes. It took me twenty years. But I had. It has been. Yeah, so do you see that? And you know the funny part is, there's one part in the interview where she says, oh, it didn't take you 20 years to get That's there. Not That's bad. not true. You know what? I think you're the plant. You know what I mean? <laughs> Downplaying her hard work. Bobby, even the, she even mentioned, because like, oh, we have the same managers too. I think even getting onto that management is pretty tough. And, and somehow, she goes, I have no connection. Hmm. Because things are different right now. You know, back in the days, it was Nepo babies, right? It was, you got to have connections still to Nepo get in. Babies. So okay, like, it's still but like Nepo now babies. it's different. You know what I mean? It's like, listen, Kiki Palmer has her own definition of what industry plant is. You have your own definition. But what I believe the common theme throughout all of this, okay. right, is that somehow they get pushed onto you more than their talent. Is the industry, is that machine, the money mm -hmm. that literally invests in you? It's like we see and something in you and we're going to push for it. Who did yeah. they say? Was a, there was a list. There was a list of industry plans. One of them was Chance the Rapper on there. I was like, I personally, I think Chance the Rapper is definitely an industry plan. Who do you guys I think is an industry plan too? From. I don't know where he came from. He just popped out. And after everybody was associated with him and he wears overalls like Arthur or something like that and, and a hat. Um, but you know what I mean? Like he's a character, you know what I mean? In the rap game. Back in the day, I always thought the viewers were in control who was going to be famous or not based on their talent, uh, creativity. How, creativity and all that. And now it seems, especially today's world, they create a, a character or an individual whose talent is not that really great, you know? And, and then push it, push it, so, push it onto you. You know, yeah, so... Uh, and you know, it's even... not genuine. I don't watch award shows anymore. I don't. Because yeah. back in the days, I thought it was the general public who would vote and to of, like, the most successful song or the most successful artist, all that stuff of that year. Mm -hmm. But now I'm noticing that it's already predetermined. Exactly. They just, you know, they show up and then they just give it, you know what I mean? So I was like... So yeah. let's look at Bobby platform versus Kiki Palmer's platform. And I'm just talking about the podcast space, okay? Bobby, right now she's interviewing Jessica Alba, Shaq, what call it? Mark Cuban. Exactly. All these famous A-listers, celebrities, right? Versus Kiki Palmer. I don't know who's, to be honest, I don't know who In she's interviewing. In all fairness, Kiki Palmer has so much more responsibilities and talents that she's busy with. Like, sure. I think podcasting is probably the least of her concern right now. I think she does it out of fun. But I feel like as much like as... she's busy booking other listen, businesses. Listen, as much as Drake had time, okay, in his schedule to let this amateur, I'm going to say it, amateur, interview him, why he doesn't go to Kiki Palmer. That's why people are saying she's an industry fan is because the industry really yes. wants to propel her. They want to push her, mm -hmm. so they're going to get all these... It's like the industry needs mm -hmm. a famous podcaster. Yeah. So they're and they're and they're designating it to be her. Like I, that guy said, she's gonna be the next Oprah, and we didn't even choose her. You know what I mean? 
Doesn't work yeah. like that. Doesn't work like that. And how about Taraji uh, P. Henson? And what she said. And what she said back then. You know what I mean? Like, are we going to let these talented, beautiful women... I'm not talking only about black women. I'm talking about also oh. every... Even Jennifer I, Aniston had a problem with um, these famous... These people that are getting five-minute fame, but mm-hmm. it's like taking the light away from hardworking, talented actors. Probably is... You know, different generations. I do definitely believe there is two different verse when it comes to old school celebrities, right? Hollywood. And right now, there is a generation that are becoming more famous. And probably she rides that wave. All right, you guys. And on that point, please like Like and subscribe to this video, okay? And yeah.